All right, so you said you have a rant. Yes, and this is more so for the media more than anything. It's specifically a four-letter network, which claims to be the number one source for sports. And I'll say this. from This has been by far the weakest finals coverage I've ever seen in my life. The NBA should be ashamed and the full letter network aforementioned should be shamed, ashamed. This didn't feel like a final series in the slightest. We have three day breaks between games. Why? There was no games over the weekend. Why? Unless you want to count Friday. Okay, sure, whatever Friday, but no games for Father's Day. The scheduling was gar was garbage. The presentation wasn't great. The halftime show was mad, mediocre. It was no type of analysis really going on. They had no real ball knowers talking about it. And it was just so – it left so much more to be desired. There was no cool promos before the games. It just felt like a regular old series – that could have been played at any time in the playoffs. It didn't feel like it didn't have that finals atmosphere. And, you know, they got the, the they all they had the YouTube TV finals logo on a court or whatever. I mean, whatever. That that who cares? Um, it's just it just didn't have that finals atmosphere. And I'm not sure what the team in the NBA in the and I'm gonna just say ESPN is doing. But they they on um, they dropped the ball on this one because this this definitely was is going to contribute to why this finals is so forgettable and why no one's going to really remember this outside of the Celtics team being just stacked. And another thing, they there needs to be some shame. And what I mean by that is all before the series, all of these people on ESPN, they picked the Mavs. And I think they did it unintegrable because there's no way you saw the Celtics in the Mavs and said, yeah, the Mavs will get this one easily. No. And the biggest shock who I, I was super shocked to find out that Tim Legler of all people picked the Mavs to win. And I feel like some funny business was going on because – they want to get – before the series, I said I, there was a, a graphic posted based on, on their official betting sports book. First of all, why in the world does a media company have a sports book? But anyway, that should be – that shouldn't even be a thing, first and foremost. But um, it said 89% of the bets were on the match. And I said they playing the game. I already knew once I saw that graphic, I right hand up to the man above. I knew the I knew the Celtics was going to win. I knew they was going to win because there's no way they 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 the league that that the media has been grifting the Mavs fans and the NBA fan base to the utmost degree when it comes to this series because they gaslit us. They tried to gaslight us and manipulate us in believing that the Mavs was going to win this series. And they ran off with y'all money at the at Vegas, and yeah, and, and fans should be way more upset about that. I'm not. I'm, I'm. It's just the fact that it's been swept under the rug. Like, hey, the ESPN has been pushing Mavs propaganda all up until the final started against the Celtics, and they said, hey, we, hey, we all picking the Mavs to win, right? Right? You should, you should, you should bet on that, you know. And and and, and people did, and guess what? You got clean. I would be super upset if I was one of y'all, one of them people who fell for that, because that's unacceptable. And there needs to be some serious regulation going forward with this stuff, because no way should the top media, sports media entity, have a sports book, and then they get on these shows and base segments, what, and gambling and all. Like, come on, that's that's it's, it's ridiculous. It's it's definitely some funny business going on in that part, man. And I'm and, and the fact that this isn't more of an issue or talked about topic is just absolutely insane. It shows where we are headed towards as a society.
Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I agree with you on everything that you said, especially the gambling part. It is weird that they would showcase, they would implement a gambling app, ESPN gambling app, and they would have segments. They would have actual show on gambling on their network. And yeah, it is kind of it is it is kind of weird. Um, and regarding your presentation, regarding your rant on the presentation, I agree with that as well. It, it they just fell flat. There was nothing special about this year's finals. I hate that they got rid of the old theme music that they used to have for the NBA finals. I don't know why they did that. I guess because they wanted to. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's because of money reason. They realize that, that maybe the artist is going to pay them to promote their music in the final. So they're like, hey, let's get let's get them. Hey, why why not? Like, who cares? Who cares about the theme song? We can get extra dollars. Why not do it? And I think some of this has to do with the fact that, you know, ESPN, they're trying to they're trying to save as much money as possible. And when you look at the deals that ESPN has signed to to get uh to get Troy Aikman and to get Joe Buck to re-sign Stephen A to re-sign Shannon Sharp to sign Pat McAfee to that contract, they're signing these big deals to keep to keep NFL to keep the NBA like these are billion dollar deals that they're doing. They're trying to figure out whatever way that they can to save money like. First take doesn't even go to the NBA Finals in, anymore. Like they used to do that. That used to be an every year occurrence. They don't do that no more. Why? Probably because they're trying to save money. Um, they're trying to cut corners, and we see the result of it. I just feel like the um, just what made the NBA Finals special, what what made it like just an event, similar in comparison to the Super Bowl in a way is that they they put the extra effort like the little things really matter to them and it feels like this year and last year let's not forget last year they're not putting the extra effort into promoting the game in giving the fans a great experience like 2019 felt like the last year where it was an amazing experience for the fans like the camera angles are very important. The way that they utilize the camera in the intros, in the um the players, they weren't doing that this year. I felt like there wasn't as much of that going on. There was a video on Twitter where somebody posted it was before, I think it was either the 2012 or 2013 finals where they showed the Miami Heat. It was uh mm -hmm. Dwayne Wade and him yep. you know, doing a little you know, before the game, little intro, mm -hmm. or whatever, where where they're they're in a huddle and he's giving a speech, or whatever, and it, it's so dope. And they will show the little, you know, the intro introduction of the players, the Miami Heat. They would do that, and you see the crowd, and they would mm -hmm. all be wearing white shirts and everything. And it was just something special about that. It just gave off an intensity, like yeah, this is this is the finality of the season. This is. This is where the best teams collide, and this is where the best basketball is being held. This yep. finals and last year's finals felt completely different. It fell flat. The players didn't feel significant. The moment didn't feel significant. And the commentary, we have, we have to get to the commentary. I, I hate to say it, but I think Doris Burke and J.J. Redick are phenomenal commentators. It's just not... <laughs> together just not together i think with doris burke she just doesn't work well with jj reddick in my brain i forget she's even commentating the game half the time. like she'll go minutes where she's not talking at all and it's just jj reddick and mike breen they need to change that um jj reddick also i think jj reddick works well with richard jefferson i've watched espn games before where jj reddick He'll be with Richard Jefferson, and they have a great rapport together. They have a great chemistry, and they're they're really entertaining. It reminds me of Jeff Van Gundy and Mark Jackson. But with this group, it just wasn't it. There wasn't any iconic uh, 
moments like like with Mark ja- Jackson when he's he's like um there goes that man um, mm-hmm. uh you know something something like they'll allow say allow me something, to have something. this dance allow me to have this dance or some hand down man down like you know iconic just moments from from each game that Mark Jackson or Jeff Van Gundy or Mike Bring brings to the table that just adds to the to the to the you know to the entertainment of the game. This finals just didn't have that at all. I understand last finals people were complaining about Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy. They did get kind of boring. They get did did get kind of annoying at times. I will say that. And but they were entertaining at the end of the day. They did add something to it to to keep you engaged. They did bring I something mean, to the table. Look at look what was on the court, and they, that that was a foregone conclusion before the finals even started. Yeah, and the, I mean, there's a legitimate argument to be made that if the games were just better, then we would just ignore it. And you know, there's a possibility you they y'all there's a possibility that can be true that if the games were just better, like all that stuff doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, it does help when the presentation. When the storyline, when when the um just just the way that the media covers it, it does help to add suspense and just to add more engagement to the game. And they they didn't do that. Like they they'd rather talk about Caitlin Clark getting fouled or K- Caitlin Clark missing the Olympic team and try to uh, politicize it or make it a gender or or a race thing, right? Instead of talking about the NBA finals. And they waited until after the Celtics won the championship. Oh, let's 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 take the entire day to talk about the Celtics winning a championship. Why not do that the entire week instead of just oh we're we're going to talk about Caitlin Clark getting hard fouled by injuries or getting checked by Kennedy Carter? Like, come on now, what are we doing? Yeah, here? let's talk. Let's talk about um the Lakers coaching stuff. I mean, you could you could for, for do multiple a segment. Days yeah, right, right on in. You could do like, okay, you could do a segment on it. And I understand that because it's the Lakers and, you know, Dan Hurley, he, he's the best college coach in the nation. I understand that. But going two, three segments on it throughout the day for each, each program, it's kind of egregious. I will say, like, come on now. Like, what are we doing here? It's the NBA finals. We need to focus on that. And then talking about LeBron James podcast, like, oh, exactly. he um he's the master manipulator and oh he he uh it's a bad look acting wise for uh Darwin, you know, for LeBron James because it seems like LeBron he he was he was scheming, he was scheming behind the scenes to uh get JJ Reddick to be the next head coach. Like, okay, man, like we what are we doing here? And I hope people understand, and I tweeted this out yesterday, what Stephen A is doing is not journalism. He is not a journalist anymore. He is a sports personality. He is entertainment. Yes, are there moments where he does journalism type work? Absolutely. But what he does now is not journalism. He is a personality. He is for entertainment purposes. Brian Windhorst is a journalist. Woj is a journalist. Malika Andrews is a journalist. Stephen A is not a journalist. He's a personality. He's an entertainer. Um, Andre Carter is an analyst. Um, Cheney is an analyst. Um, Mike Greenberg is not a journalist anymore. He's, he's, he's a moderator. He's not a journalist. So I just want people to understand ESPN is not focusing on journalism. They're focusing on entertainment. They're focus, focusing on clickbait hot takes that will get people to come watch their shows. That's not what they're doing. They, they are not focusing on good journalism. They haven't done that in years and they're going to continue to do it. So I just want people to understand when they say, oh, Journalism is in the gutter. This is not journalism. This is entertainment. They're focusing on entertainment, and that's what they want to do nowadays. It doesn't matter about journalism anymore. It's about entertainment. And I, I think their their entertainment sports program network, I think that's what it is. I don't know. But regardless, that's what they are. They're not 
focusing on germans so just want to clear the air on that one for people that always say journalism's in the gutter because that's not what they're doing they're, <laughs> they're entertaining you at the end of the day just let me be me.